Happy TGIF to you too, Thorn. How goes it today? We get the uh, scene set here. Uh, so we're going to be doing some main story quests today. And we'll see what kind of other fun stuff pops up. Uh, so yeah, how you doing today, Thorin? Get my controller. While we wait for the queue. Oh, and the P have already gone. We're just waiting on the queue. <coughs> A little dry spot there this morning. Uh, getting things done on your... Oh, a Friday, Friday's off are always fun. Uh, I've got a couple of Fridays off coming up. Because uh, I work evenings and I'm, I'm taking the Fridays off to go to uh, Pinky's football games. So... I may or may not get extra stuff done on those days. <laughs> I've actually got to make a, an extra run on my way to work today. So that'll be fun. Uh, just an update. No stream on Sunday. Because uh, I will be doing the, uh, the Jesse James Arts and Crafts Festival in Kearney, Missouri. I'll have a booth set up there selling my books. No, wait, no, sorry, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm backwards. This Sunday is the Planet Comic Con Thank You Picnic. Next Saturday is the Arts and Crafts Fair. So, your work schedule, you get every other Friday off. Well, that's cool. Uh, the Actually, the guy, the guy that I work in evening shift probably could take every other Friday off. Uh, he's got enough PTO racked up. <laughs> He could take every other Friday off for a year and be just fine. So, uh... So where we're at here. We just, uh, beat... Barbaricia. Uh, the, 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 the woman with the, the big hair and a lot of wind. I can, I can only imagine how many hair dryers she's got going at the same time. Uh, we are pushing through the void. That used to be a world like the first, uh, but it's easier to portal in and out of here. Uh, there's some void scent. They're not happy with the way things are. Uh, we have defeated two of the main main uh, big bads here, uh, Barbaricia, and a, uh, a very rocky dude that could bring other void scent back to life. Every Friday off is, yep. <laughs> so, uh, so here's this deserter void scent. You're the ones who felled Barbaricia. I, I won't make trouble. I I'll obey. So please let me stay. If you would obey, then tell me all you know of Golbez. Big knight dude. Actually, Golbez was big dude in armor who was giving out pieces of Varshan's sister's essence. To make uh, other void set more powerful. Varshan and his sister uh, being dragons. There isn't much I can tell. Only the Archfiends are allowed into his domain, wherever it is. None but they know. I see. No better way to guard oneself than keeping one's location secret. How does Golbez communicate with his minions afield? He has these scepters? Staves? Whatever they are. He uses them to talk to those far away. Not unlike Link Pearls, at least in function. That will be all. Many thanks for your cooperation. My thanks to you as well for affording me the time. I am satisfied, so let us rejoin the others and head home. So we're, we're literally in the world of the Void Scent here. And you've noticed a, a, a slight change to my gear look uh, since last week. I did do some uh, grinding in the the circles of uh, as, as Abyssos. Uh, so I got upgraded uh, headgear uh, and arm guards. I went ahead and took the glamour off the uh, body armor. Uh, still have it on the pants and boots. Uh, but I'll, I'll get those... When I get this all upgraded... I'll see how it looks, 
and then uh, decide what which, uh, look to keep. But I just I like the glowing side horns on that. So I trust you understand that once we leave the thirteenth, we will not return until we are prepared to resume our search. Knowing this, are you ready to depart? You will not be able to freely return to the 13th. Are you certain you wish to leave? I mean, okay, so, okay. So I have to leave to continue the story. I mean, there's nothing else to do here. Imagine there's a point in the story where we're going to come back. And, and zero. Zero lay in there. Back to Troya, and that's home. <laughs> Got that little gap under my mask where you can see my eyes. I should see if there's a way to slide that visor up or down. Stinian, you're gonna stay here and watch over Zero till she comes to? Yeah, I haven't quite been on my job long enough to earn quite that much PTO, but I've got enough to take uh, occasional days off here and there. Must be a tedious job standing there watching that, waiting for something to come through to attack. See, as soon as you see that that open up, though, I'd be drawing my weapons. Ah, you're all safe. I'll save plus one. A moment while I close the gate. Okay. I'll always be sure you can close the gate when you there. come back through. We may rest easy for now. Was there any trouble? I expect some void sent slipped through. A few did, aye. But we were ready and dealt with them without incident. Cool. That is well. I cannot thank you enough for your vigilance. Yes, yes, you're grateful. But aren't you forgetting something more important? Like what? You know. The polite but warm formalities one delights in hearing when their little brother returns from a long <laughs> journey. Were we really gone that long? Indeed. You are right. It's a little sad he didn't save his sister yet. <clears throat> it is good to be home again, among those who I love dearly and missed so much. <laughs> And we are glad to receive you, Vasha. Welcome home. Chambers have been prepared for your use at Megaduta. Let us take Zero there at once. I do like the the, the double glowing horn on there versus. I know I know the single horn is the signature of. A summoner in Final Fantasy, but uh, I like the I like the ethereal glowing horns, the double. Uh, but this would also because it's, it's a helmet of casting, it would also go on my uh, black mage. So. Our mission took many an unexpected turn. I am relieved that we have all returned safely. But before you all enjoy the rest you have earned at 
does that. <laughs> Again, always suggesting I rest. I you on one last matter. Zero. At least she still breathes. It just took a While lot she out of her imprisoning. For wear, she remains locked in slumber, and I cannot help but worry. It took a lot out of her to uh, imprison all those void, uh, all the void sent into crystals. Is there aught we can do to expedite her recovery? If her ether is exhausted, perhaps I can share some of mine now. In the wastelands of the 13th, one can only replenish ether by taking it from others, be it by trade or by force. In contrast, the source is rich in ambient ether. Simply being here and drawing breath, Zero will absorb what she needs. So then give it up your, your juice. Uh, she'll just soak it up from, her, from the world around her. I believe so. She will awaken in time, and when she does, give her something to eat. Judging by her form, she should also be able to derive nourishment from food. I know you promised her your ether, but perhaps she might appreciate fine harnish cuisine more. <laughs> food can certainly be arranged. Something with chocolate in it. Chocolate always makes you feel better. She looks like any other person. Unsurprising, perhaps, given that she is only part void sent. It's like the the the, the daywalker esque. Uh, Zero said before of hers. that Xenos had altered her essence. A change wrought, I suspect, with the power of darkness. It acted upon the part of her that is void sent, rendering it dominant. Thus, we were able to reverse it with the power of... Power of light. I labor to believe that Xenos possessed such arcane knowledge. In all likelihood, it came from Than Daniel. Were Zero wholly void sent, I doubt the crystal would have had an effect on her. One might say that Hydaelyn had a hand in your meeting. <laughs> Even though she's gone, she's still around. It is no exaggeration to say that Zero has proven herself invaluable. A boon from Hydaelyn herself. Her cooperation may come at a price, but whatever it is, I am willing to pay it. Exhausting though it may be at times. Hey, Arashi, how you doing? Boo! Ah! <laughs> what you up to this morning? Let's see. Nine's got direct hit, critical hit, or determination. Let's go critical hit. I've got a lot of direct hits, I think. Jaduna on the moon. Okay. Just only with ten to an errand. If I may excuse myself, I wish to pay a visit to the High Crucible. While the scales function admirably, it would be prudent to have them inspected for signs of degradation. By all means, I shall do the same for this vessel. Then I'll go and meet with the soldiers, share with them what I learned fighting Void Scent in the 13th. What of you, my friend? Have you any immediate plans? Um... Might go tend to my island. Truly, had I known you had such interests, I might have entrusted you with the development of our nearby isles to attract visitors. At any rate, should you be in no hurry, might I trouble you with a small task first? I wish to have food ready for Zero when she awakens, you see. Would you be willing to go to Merd's Main and ask for suitable refreshments? Oh, I'm, not, I'm not accenting him like I should. So, in the mood. Oh... Brain, brain weasels will, can do that, yes. I mean, do do what you feel you need to do. But, um... 
If, if you feel you need to leave, you will be greatly missed. If you want to stay, let me know what I can do to help. Uh, I've always got that, that Weasel Stomping Day video I can call up real quick. Uh, so, I, I had to put that, that, that video in my Discord and pin it. Whenever you've got an issue with brain weasels, just watch the Weasel Stomping Day video. I don't think it would do anything, but you know, it's nice to feel you can just go around stomping weasels. Even if they're just brain weasels, it's still a nice, a nice thought. Ah, uh, me. I mean, has there been any particular issues in any of the communities, or just a general... Eh. With them. Please make yourself comfortable. What? The guest of the Satrap has collapsed from hunger? Of course I would be happy to help. You need only tell me what you desire. Probably not the Aether. Rich and hearty meal, plenty of meat. That might be perfect for an adventurer preparing to raid a treasure vault. I fear it would be too much for someone coming out of a long slumber. I would recommend something gentler on the stomach, like these apples here. They've just come in and I can guarantee their freshness. See, they're not making friends. So it's 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 more unfamiliarity with long-term friendship being in a community for a long time. I, I, I can yeah I can see that. Uh, It's, it's, yeah, the brain weasel is telling you, you know, being in, in communities like that for any period of time is, is scary and, and anxiety. Yeah. And that's, again, that's, that's the... That's what the brain weasels don't always understand is the difference between online communities, online friends, and physical neighborly friends. Is, is the brain weasels just they're all friends, you're moving, you know, they're all right. gonna be cut out, so cut them out now. Is this an inn? What happened? How did I get here? So you're looking for it with the anxiety of the move, you're looking for some some of the familiarity of, of having nobody with you for the move. There's no time. I must rejoin the battle. I must Battle's done. You're awake! Wonderful! Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Some sort of fiend? No. A fiend? Where is it? Where? Ugh, but this is no time for jokes. You're in the source, my dear. The world next door, so to speak. The others brought you that, after you collapsed. <laughs> that, that would be... Especially figuring she, she grew up in the 13th, a world full of void scent with monsters and creatures that are out to consume you. So waking up to that face 
you know, not knowing where you are, having grown up in that world, yeah, that would be a little bit startling. I'll fetch them at once. Wait, just a moment. I mean, hear those, those, those heavy footsteps. <laughs> well, you're still not sure what's going on. Yeah. That, that, that would be all rather frightening and scary. <laughs> Just sit there not knowing what to do with the apples. I took the liberty of arranging refreshments. I hope you find them as flavorful as they are invigorating. This isn't what you promised. But I suppose ether is ether. <laughs> Whoa. Wait, wait, wait. Don't yeah. tell me you don't know how to eat? The kid and the tall guy are bodies inhabited by a portion of the dragon Vertra. It's how he goes out and uh, views the, the, the lands that he, he rules over. Friendly dragon, uh, always done it from behind the scenes, so he's always had a body to go out and make sure everybody's happy and healthy so he's just you know put put the the tall guy body away the warrior body away and brought the kid body back out for a bit S same guy different bodies <laughs> i took what i needed from it what's the problem where's the enjoyment in that you're supposed to bite to chew to savor and then swallow. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave that one alone. <laughs> That's the way. So, did it taste good? I don't know. <laughs> the long years without eating may have dulled your sense of taste. Well, we void scent of no need for such when consuming others. <laughs> there are some who speak of taste when describing the quality and affinity of that praise ether. Well, I did, yeah. But I mean, depending on what what the what you know is involved, a little little nibbling here and there probably isn't you know totally out of out of the question. But I loathe the act. Taking ether in small amounts like this is one thing, but diluting my essence, diminishing myself, I'd sooner die. And I have died countless times. You have? Um, but what happens when you do? Not much. After a while, you return, together with all your expended life force. The important thing is to die where others won't devour you. Amazing! My peers who study immortality and resurrection would be most interested in this phenomenon. <laughs> The question of taste aside, I am glad that you are able to partake of food like us. I dare say it agrees with your personal preferences. That's true. You can keep giving me the same on a regular basis. Very well. As my guest, I shall see that you do not want for comfort. And one other thing. One more thing. We brought you to our world without your consent, and for that, I apologize. If you wish it, we will return you to yours once you have regained your strength. Hmm. 
It's fine. I have no reason to go back. But but if you don't go back, who's going to protect those that are, have taken refuge in your domain? Except for yours, perhaps. You intend to cross over again, I take it. I do. I have yet to find my sister. I want nothing more than to rush to her aid, to find this Golbez and free her from his clutches, if he still holds her captive. Though Which... if our recent experience has taught us anything, it is that the 13th is more dangerous than we ever imagined. Caution must be our watchword. Barbaricia was saying that she wanted all the rest of the Dragon's Aether to become more powerful. So I imagine Golbez does still have um, Azdaya, Azdaya still uh, imprisoned. Better late than never. In the short time you spent in our world, you left a trail of chaos in your wake. You managed to return in one piece this time. But don't assume you'll be so lucky the next. She still sends it. Okay, I was about to say. She's taking, what, three bites out of that apple we so far? We make no assumptions and spare no preparation. Speaking of which, while we rest and ready ourselves, I ask that you tell me more about your home. In return, I will tell you about ours. I will show you my domain, Rad's at hand. Again, a stranger in this strange land. I wonder how much... I have a condition. You must come too. Okay. You have my thanks. I wonder how much she might have... might remember of the source when she was uh, Xenos' avatar. The world is brimming with Aether. I feel invigorated just standing here in the breeze. Glad, I, glad am I to hear that. So, is there any place in particular you wish to see? Hmm. Perhaps where that food came from. Apple, was it? Well, I don't expect I'll collapse again. It would be good to know where I can procure more if necessary. Marid's main it is, then. I shall introduce you to the head waitress, M Melil. Now accompanying me, okay. I don't know that I can use the Aethernet while they are with me. The phone behind me is going ringy dingy. Who it was that was calling? So let's just walk through the river in the process. Okay. Uh, let me wait a second here. Okay. Oh, oh, zero scythe. That with with the opening of the Reaper class, yeah. The the. The scythes look very neat. A um, couple of the ones I've used as a reaper uh, actually fire up like a chainsaw. When you wield them, you hear it go brrrr, and then the, on the inside of the curve are uh, saw blades that start uh, moving and vibrating. While we're coming through here anyway. As a matter of fact, let me see. I should be able to change. Nope, this isn't one that does it. Still still a cool looking one though. 
I like how, how they, they, they do, you know, like, they're like switchblade sights. Blade retracts when you're not using it and swings out when you are. Gonna check in with my retainer here real quick. See if she got the uh, axolotl. Nope. I'm seriously tempted to reset my uh, second retainer to be a fisher as well, just to uh, double up the chances of getting the axolotl. It's so small. <laughs> yeah. I'll double up the chances of getting the axolotl uh, minion. Let's see where we gotta go. Gotta go up this way. Yes, my, my character is a potato. He is a lalafell. I, I do like right, especially standing up next to, you know. This guy could just grab me by my head and just lift my whole body up. See how the weapon size the character does? Yeah. I don't, well, I mean, it would make it rather awkward. You know, for a Lalafell my size to be carrying a, a scythe. You know, the sized for zero there. This is the place. The air is different here, and I speak not of the heat. There's a texture to it, a fullness, unlike that of elsewhere. You smell the cooking, I believe. Hanish cuisine is quite fragrant and delicious, I hope you will agree. Melil! Welcome to Merhead's Main. Greetings, Melil, and may I introduce you to Zero. She is an esteemed guest and ask that you see, her, see to her meals during her stay. Ah, yes, Merhead has told me all. Please come to us whenever you're hungry. We'll look after you. It was here that Tesselhoof obtained the apple. While the palace cooks can prepare whatever you desire, it is certainly a quick and convenient food. I'll remember it. Who are the ones there, moving their bodies about? Is it for some ritual related to eating? I, I mean, dancers could be, I mean, maybe not necessarily a ritual, but entertainment while others eat. So it might be considered ritual-esque. The dancers, they move their bodies to bring pleasure to those who are watching. It is a form of entertainment, part of our culture. I messed up the word culture there badly. How needlessly complicated. We avoid and prefer simpler pleasures. That may be the way of it now, but your world too must have had such complicated diversions once. I don't remember. Well, let us move on. I propose we visit, visit the Balshan Bazaar, where good goods the world over may be found. And I'm going all over the place with the accent, I know it. By Jove, I'm going to give it a try. I can't mount here, can I? Nope. So let's, uh, let's randomize out another minion. Did we get Gilgamesh? We got Greg. Of course, the quest would want me on the other side of the bazaar. Yeah, the the, the weapon scaling is nice. The weapon uh, glamour customization is nice. I can have the the cactuar, the the Sir Sabo tender, on my weapons, or a Moogle. Like my machinist has a, a Moogle gun. What are all these things for? What do you do here? This is a marketplace where people buy and sell goods. Since its earliest days, Razatan has served a, as a trading hub, and here you'll find not only local products but wares from distant lands. I should mention that the vendors generally only accept payment in coin or tombstones. 
If the result you desire, I shall take care of it. So that's what tombstones are for. Void sent returned with them on occasion, but I never knew their purpose. They struck me as useless trinkets, and I couldn't understand your obsession with them. On that subject, there appeared to be no shops in the 13th. Do you never make bargains in which possessions are exchanged? We do, but rarely. We strike bargains when we want something done. If we desire an object, we kill whoever has it. That would make for a very poorly sustainable marketplace. If you just killed whoever had whatever you wanted. I see, I see. Your bargains may be likened to employment, I believe. Yeah. I shall bear this in mind. With that, let us continue on. I propose we head to the High Crucible of Alchemia. I'm used to Aether riding around to get Aether riding from one spot to another in town. I don't <laughs> gotta think about where I actually have to go when I'm on foot. Isu. Why, Master Vertra, how many how may we serve you this evening? If you're here for your vessel, I'm afraid we're still tending to it. No no, there is no rush. Pray, take as much time as you require, and know that I have complete faith in your work. The High Crucible is home to the finest alchemists. They are the ones who created my bodies and can provide you with healing as well. Hmm. Now that I think on it, you weren't all that surprised when I changed forms. Were you aware from the start that I was a soul occupying a vessel, not my own? It's hardly uncommon in our world. When given the chance, many shed their bodies to claim stronger ones. Oh, you must be the rumored guest. We've been most eager to meet you. If you have a moment, would you care to stay for some tea? The sisters know we'd love to hear your tales. No, I've had enough food for now, and can always obtain more without the need for inane chatter. Now, now, no need to decline outright. I dare say you are tired, so let us save it for another time and return to Megaduta. If aught catches your eye en route, do not hesitate to say so. Little tour of rods at Han here. I hate the, I hate the the that 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 visual sudden slowdown when your sprint wears off. Because like, okay, you're moving at a good speed, and something just ugh. like the 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 the. the Visual equivalent to uh, driving down the road at a high speed and you hit a big puddle. And your car just goes, Hua! Some sort of fruit? Pitiful things, though. I imagine you need to eat a lot to derive any satisfaction. These are mulberry trees. But the fruits are indeed edible. More important are the leaves, which we feed to silkworms. Without the creatures, we wouldn't have the silk to make our famous stuff nari and weave. Furthermore, the bark of the tree also possess possesses medicinal properties. You'd be hard-pressed to find a more useful plant. Is that so? Aside from food, I wouldn't have considered any other purpose for it. Master Vertra, and Tasselhoof too!
If there's a young uh, Mer- <laughs> Marad, and that must be your sister, Yasra. Is all well at the orphanage? Yes, Your Excellency. The other children are very nice, and we all look out for one another. Oh, oh, just the other day, Astidian came to see us. Everyone was really excited. Truly, Astidian paid you a visit? That is well. Is she a new friend? Friend, you know what that is? What? You mean you don't? Shh. She is a visitor from a faraway land, you see, and is still unfamiliar with our language. Then we'll teach you. A friend is someone you like to play with. Play with. Zeno seemed to be enjoying himself when he fought you. Is that the same thing? Yeah, no, I mean... Zeno's... Uh, you, Oh. Again, I wouldn't say friend, but you know, his, his his form of play might have been a little bit rough for friendship. I see, but is having someone to play with so fulfilling? I still don't do not understand why. Why he traversed the great expanse? Why he risked life and limb for you? But I waste energy dwelling on such things. I am not Xenos. I stand to gain nothing by knowing his heart. I'm sorry I couldn't explain it well. There's no need to apologize. The fault is not yours, but mine, for failing to make sense of your words. Well, we had better get back to our errand. Goodbye, it was nice meeting you. Even though her, I mean, the, the camera angles they're choosing pretty much keep one eye or another covered with her hat. So I want to look at something. Yeah. I can have the headgear there or not, but there's nothing adjustable on the visor. Zenos, I understand. I thought I understood the ways of your world. The more I learn of it, the more I realize how little I actually know. It's all so strange. Your behavior and your reasons. I find myself baffled at every turn. But the feeling is not unwelcome. I'm learning bit by bit. It was the right decision to join you. I mean, because she's literally comes from a world where you're constantly in battle to survive. But if you lose the battle, you die, but you come back. And everything you get is achieved through stealing from another or killing another, you know, just forcefully taking from another rather than, you know, growing of your own hands or, or anything freely given. So just the whole mentality shift of it all. Oh, excuse me. I believe Zero's time here has been rewarding, and was in no small part due to your company. My thanks for agreeing to join us. Come, let us return to Magaduta. Um, this well, I had played through the main the main story quests as they were available up until a couple weeks ago, and then they released the 6.2 patch. So this is literally new main story quests that just came out. Uh, last week I played through up to a point where we met Zero. Um, and other stuff. I mean, I've, I've played through freeing Rods at Han. Um, and quite a while back I played through the stuff that was uh, over in the, the first, which is another duplicate world. But yeah, this this is the 6.2 patch that just came out a, a couple weeks ago. 
so uh, I think I'm, I'm still ahead of where Pine is at I need to catch one another one of his streams again soon to see where he's at uh, so what are your impressions of Rad Zatan? but I think if not this quest maybe one or two after this will be end of the, will be the end of the story thus far there will be more more story in future patches there's a lot of mortals considering your origin I can see why that might be your first observation though they would call each other people I think if you wish to know about our fair city I should be glad to place a guide at your disposal no need I'll show myself around there's only so much about my home I can share with you in return after all um, well, I remember some big old tales turkey or past, chicken on the table there. I cannot speak to their authenticity, but if that is enough, then I will tell you of the events that saw darkness engulf our world. The Contra Memoria. We are all ears. Please. Long we ago, saw both eyes for a moment there. Light filled the world, and all was at peace. But then the servants of darkness came, and they bequeathed a black art unto men. Big turkey, a little true. Uh, well, there, there's other bird species on here. Could be one of those too. I don't know. They might cook up a chocobo. Channeling the power of hope and prayer, one could call forth fearsome beings. Known as Eidolans. Eidolans, Eidolans. Summons like mine. The Asians. And these Eidolans are surely primals. <laughs> then you have faced the same. And understand that when an Eidolan is birthed, strife follows. And in such strife, the weak are the first to suffer. Well, and, and we don't know how much fluff there is to uh, Chocobo's feathers either. That could be a, a regular-sized Chocobo on the table there. Although I would imagine not. When it seemed the world would be plunged into chaos, heroes appeared. They were blessed with a singular power. The power to bind the ether of Eidolans within crystals known as Memoria. My mother was one such memoriate, but in fighting to save many, she herself was touched by darkness, as was I. And so you were born part void sent, before the world was overcome. How exactly did that calamity come to pass? Did the memoriates not triumph? They did. They expunged the seeds of chaos and restored the peace. Only to find themselves seduced by the darkness they had sealed. Saddle dimensions would it, uh, indicate not... Well, the, the, the way this was... Once upon a time, the, 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 the star, like they, they call it, was whole. Then the uh, final days occurred. This was in the time of the Ashians, the ancients. Um, and they created, um, not Heidelin, but the other one, I can't remember his name now. They created the, the, this ultimate primal, basically, to stop the... Oh, you're, we're, we're talking chocobo sizes. Never mind, I was thinking other kinds of... Saddle, the dimensions of the saddles, yeah prevent feather damage. That could be. I was, I, was thinking, I was thinking when you were saying saddle dimensions, I was thinking something else. <laughs> no, you're fine. My my, my brain is... They spread we're... the taint, transforming men into monsters. What do you call void scent? And raised armies to wage new wars. 
because you're you're my, we're we're talking about the history of the thirteenth, which, which is essentially another dimension. So when I saw the word dimensions, that's what my brain went to <laughs> instead of the chocobo. Yeah, saddle dimensions. Well, I'd have to see how a Not saddle the fits the chocobo next time. Power. Nor the last. I can mount one. Some defied temptation and held fast to the light. My mother and I among them. Because like when dragons are saddled, usually the, the saddle's more sitting on. There's not a whole lot of straps. Maybe a strap or two. Uh, but some some of the other mounts, you basically you're just hanging on to for dear life. There is no saddle. For years so. and years we fought. But it was not enough. And when our strength was spent, our bulwarks broken. So too was the world. The flood of darkness. The stars faded from the heavens as a pall black as pitch enveloped creation. Darkness raged unchecked, rending the very walls of reality. I was cast into the rift and there trapped for what felt like an eternity. Until I came upon a crack. Tiny, infinitesimal, but enough for me to squeeze through and find my world changed beyond recognition into the lightless waste you saw. So that is how you were able to escape becoming a void sent in full. I suppose I should consider myself fortunate. Were I like most others, I wouldn't have lasted a day before being devoured. We, the lost, are better equipped to survive in a lost world. <laughs> See, Astinian recognizes some of that there. The shoulder is going to say something important. A lost world, you say? I wouldn't be so sure. The 13th is still there, is it not? What are you getting at? To explain requires that we initiate you into the truth of the source and its reflections. Be warned that this will take a while. That's what I was starting to get into. Because when, when, when the big, when the Ashians created their big primal and Highland was created, it was, the source was split into the source plus 13 other reflections, each with its own elemental affinity. The source having all of them, the reflections each have an individual one. So the 13th being then, the darkness. Unlike the worlds that have been rejoined, Mine still. The Oracle of Light prevented the first from being completely overcome. So the situation may not be completely identical to that of your 13th. But the fact remains that we were able to restore a measure of balance to a world brought to the brink of destruction. After which, some intrepid young souls succeeded in restoring life back to lands thought lost to light. Yep, me, Rain, and uh, um, Gaia. Which gives me cause to hope the day may yet come when life springs forth anew in the Thirteenth. Of course, these are only possibilities. I offer no guarantees. But having experienced what we have, I dare say we are more qualified than most to speak on the matter. <laughs> We've done it before, Wait, so we'll try to do it again. I don't understand. Why would you say these things? As if you mean to. But the sole reason you came to the void was... To find a dragon, aye. And in light of what we've seen, we'd be fools to strive for more. But we scions... Former scions, begging your pardon... Have a habit of not leaving well enough alone. <laughs> we come in to do one thing, we'll fix everything. Or try to, Your anyway. habits die hard, don't they, my friend?
Restoring the light would serve our efforts to find and free Ashdaya. There is no reason not to try. Do as you will. I have no desire to save that world. Be that as it may, we will have need of your power when next we face Void Scent. You know how it works. If you want my help, you must pay my price. And now that you've drawn Golbez's attention, it's going to cost you more. A lot more. Okay. I will consider this a deposit. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so she's taking her price, her deposit, in stock in apples. Okay. That's something that can only appreciate in value, right? Apples, a, a, apple, that apple will be worth more later, right? Stock in apples only goes up. Time in the void was short. We managed to ascertain that my sister yet lives, and it cannot be overstated how fortunate we are to have met Azira. But the greater blessing is nevertheless you, my friend, for your encouragement to embark upon my search anew, and your help in overcoming the challenges thus far. Yeah. <laughs> Turn into wine, sure. <laughs> I'm more just thinking, you know, like real world Apple stock, you know, a stock in Apple Incorporated. So, but yeah, that value of apples turned into wine would, would definitely go up. What is that thing? This is slimy eyeballs gittering across the floor. Golvez and his minions will seek to stymie our efforts. Of this, we can be sure. But with you at my side, I have confidence that we will succeed. <laughs> that we will find and liberate my sister. And that we will sh we shall return home together. Considering that, that half the people I work with all have, a I ha all have iPhones, um, Apple as a company is always present in my mind. Let's see. Spell speed, critical hit, vitality, and skill speed. Jadoon platoon in the moon. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Golbez is having another meeting. There's two remaining archfiends. We've taken out earth and wind. Now I just got to what water and fire left. First Scarmiglione, and now Barbariccia. Useless, the both of them. It was no lie. They conspire with a memorial. I don't conspire with the Memoriant, they lost to the Memoriant. And their search for oh. the dragon. Us, yeah, we conspire with the Memoriant. The war looms nigh. We cannot allow these interlopers to interfere. If I may, my lord, I have a plan to eliminate them. In order to guarantee its success, however. I will require Kanyatso's cooperation. We have no sport to be had, then I'll play along. As much as I dislike <laughs> your lead, I have no patience for screaming. Well and good to have confidence, but do not forget the cost of failure. I'm noticing the, the, the gem and the visor 
similar reference point to the single stone in the uh, Empire's foreheads, the leaders of the Empire, and the single stone that was in um, the chest of uh, the the weapon that we fought early on in Realm Reborn. Rest assured, I will see the dream into fruition. Even should I be consumed by my own flames, I will pave the way for one and all. Then I will trust in your oath and your plan. We will give you cause to rejoice, my lord. This I vow. <laughs> As Golbez just sits on his throne. That is some heavy duty armor. Take the helmet off. Let's see what's underneath. No sacrifice is too great. Even should my four arch fiends be lost, I will not halt my steps. The prison of passivity is an obstacle to my cause, and so you must fall. What? Irony that the blessed damned should set us free. As I swore so long ago. That you're looking to go. What, what, what is your ultimate goal here, Golbez? The gate lies open. At long last, my ambition shall be fulfilled. Very ominous, very, very, not creepy, but uh, very dark and ominous. Even realms long lost dark may find in memory rebirth spark. Not memory, but memory. Alrighty, and that actually concludes main story stuff. Until the next uh, update, where they add main story stuff, which will probably be 6.4. I am your father's, brother's, nephew's, cousin's, former roommate. What's that make us? Absolutely nothing! Hi there, Foxes. Thank you very much for that Prime sub. I know those, those Prime subs are just you one of those a month. So I've, I very much appreciate and thank you for... Uh, giving me that that one a month that you've got and because it's a sub it's bean time uh, I think somebody in the other room heard me and was just chuckling about that a second so I just change scenes here so you can see a bit better I'm giving him a good stir okay, eyes are closed there's the bean. I cannot see it at all. I don't know the color or anything on it. Um. Hey, hon. Somebody grab me a cup of water. <laughs> she goes, I have nothing to drink to wash this down with. So, again, I have not seen it. Yeah. Hmm. That. Thank you. I mean, not not a particularly strong, which is not not a good one. Ah. 
Ah. And just given the options, I, I think that was a booger flavored one. Ah, yeah. Of course, I have to go back when I go back and clip this. I'll, I'll look at the color. Assuming it's not a chroma keyed color, well, I'll look at the color and, and get an idea then. But I, yeah, yeah, that was that was, that was, that was not a good flavor. Thank you for the booger there, foxes. <laughs> Thank you for the sub. So, if that's the finish of the main story quest stuff until the next, ex next not full expansion, but next uh, bigger update, what to do? Level up bard. I want to look at Monk. I'll look at my Monk's abilities here real quick. Snap Punch. Yeah, only one from a target's flank. From the rear. Raptor form. Okay, so there's still some stuff. So Snap Punch and Demolish are still side and rear. But everything else is, uh, there's no real direction or side requirements. Howling Fist delivers an attack with the potency of a hundred to all enemies in a straight line before you. It can only be executed while in combat and under the effect of the fifth chakra. Huh. Let's see, arm's length is a. Uh... I need to uh, adjust something here. There we go. Now I can see those are separate <laughs> displays. I'm working on leveling Bard. So let's run some duty finder stuff. Let's just run a run a random dungeon. And in the meantime, while we wait for the dungeon to pop, let's go see what updates are on my island. I made a couple of, of well, I wouldn't say small. But uh, my island has received some updates and level ups and uh, other new things. I need to do some gathering to uh, uh, be able to upgrade my workshops a bit more. And I think, honestly, I think that's those are just cosmetic. I don't think they actually affect anything, you know, as far as what they can produce or how quickly they, they can produce things. I still got the aftertaste of that booger bean. <sighs> check on crops, check on uh, pets. So 
from the beach to the clubhouse. And I have a stone path with nice handy torches. Picked up some calories and some experience. Resources coming in. And I've got uh, the mammoths are taking care of my animals. So this is all just happening automatically. I do need to periodically make uh, fresh food for them. Let's see how crops, oh, crops are all ready to go. Harvested the animals. I want to show you the last addition I put on the island. Up here. And then up these steps. And then up these back steps. This is the, the last expansion you can make on the island. It gives you a landmark point at which I put the lighthouse. I figured a nice high point out here along the beach would be great for perfect for a lighthouse. So that's where I put the lighthouse. So to upgrade my workshop twos to workshop threes, I'll need a whole lot of iron ore, a whole lot of uh, luco granite. I've got enough uh, island garnet. I need a whole lot more logs, a whole lot more hemp. So average wait time for this. Jeez, this is for a duty roulette. Average wait time is up to 12 minutes. Okay, Luco Granite and Iron Ore are going to be up the hill over here. It's not the right kind of log, but I figure I'll grab it right now anyway. Iron is the bane of your existence. Um, I'm going to guess one of them is Minecraft. What's the other one? I know you made a Stardew Valley reference, so I'm going to Stardew Valley is the other one, right? Minecraft and Stardew. Which that's the thing about doing the duty roulette. I have no idea what dungeon we're about to run. Let's say a quick hello. 
Hokugane Castle. Uh, when you encounter this one in the storyline, this one actually has a sad ending. Oh, New World, okay. Pulling, armoring, and weapons, okay. Here on your island sanctuary, anyway, the the iron is really easy to obtain. I got one of my attacks. Literally has my character jumping up in the air to fire his bow. Yeah, okay, so yeah, armor. So anytime, uh, uh, yeah, a, a skill-based... So you're leveling a skill in the game, you need to, to need a resource to do that. That's where that resource is a thousand times harder to find. Samurai armor. Poison him up. Wind bite him. Boost everybody. Just laying on the damage. In Stardew Valley, a uh, I, I know there is mining. I just don't know how uh, difficult iron is to get. is actually four, but I grabbed it anyway. Levels in the mine, yeah. Just survi surviving long enough to get to those levels. So you can just take the elevator or stairs down to them quickly. I've seen quite a bit of Stardew, I just haven't played a whole lot of it myself. Big face. That's a big, big face right there.
That's a big dude right there, too. That was a waste of the AOE because there was just one guy in range. I saw a ninja's flame attack. Might have been one of the enemies then. So they're, they're ninjas are the ones that have been summoning the big faces. With big faces with very aggressive earlobes. Super into min-maxing is just, yeah. Well, it's a lot easier in some games than others. Definitely. Final Fantasy never skimped on is the visuals for the attacks. I pitch perfect anytime that uh, meter, kind of the middle right hand side, shows one mark in it. But the more marks, the, the more damage it will do. How you doing? Doing too bad. We just finished the uh, main story quest cutscenes thus far in 6.2. So, waiting for more cutscenes to be released.
trying to kill a couple of guys here before they blow up on us. Yo, Jimbo! AKA Gilgamesh. Slight splitter there. Money that the dog collects right there, the more that attack hurts. So if we pick up all the money before the dog gets to it, then the attack doesn't hurt much at all. I also have to say it's one of the more interesting battle mechanics that, that I've ever seen in any game. But even when you summon him in Final Fantasy X, you have to give your Jimbo Gill in order for him to do more damage. And he got paid nothing. The attack didn't hurt all that much. Oops. Let's see. Nothing in here I really want. Yeah, samurai. And that is Kugane Castle. <laughs> Honestly, with, with, with a decent team, there's no dungeon in here that's particularly long. So. Got the daily reward from that one. Ooh. This one has an adventure in need of a DPS. So I get double experience. Or not double, but I get extra experience. Reward for being an adventurer in need. And it's honestly kind of rare for uh, DPS to be the adventurer in need. That's just an apple tree. Uh, in here, iron is real easy to get. Once you get a sufficient... Um, a high enough uh, island level to be able to craft the... Uh, I think it's the bronze beak axe. Yeah, because that's the water. Yeah. Once you're high enough level, island level to be able to craft the bronze beak axe, 
you can start getting uh, the Luco Granite and Iron Ore out of the speckled and rough black rocks. And these are basically in fixed spots around the island. So you, like, I'll harvest these three black rocks, come back after a certain amount of time, and they'll have respawned. I can harvest them again. I'm pretty sure it's a set amount of time. I don't know what that amount of time is off the top of my head. Let's see, I'm going to be upgrading three workshops. So... I'm going to need 45 total Oops. iron ore. I've now got 15. I have the workshops working on, on making things right now, but that will continue even as the workshop is upgraded. Yeah, this is this this is the top for all intents and purposes. And this whole island is mine. Uh, I can have others visit if I wish. Um So I think I've got it set, set for uh, friends can visit. But like just random people can't come onto my island and harvest my resources. I think even if I have friends visit, they, they can only come and look. They can't, you know, do anything. speckled rock here now if you want to try to harvest from these speckled and uh, black rocks before getting that uh, beak axe you'll still get the island stone you just won't get the luco granite or the iron ore Water's all gone. Oh, that reminds me. I need to look through the, uh... I need, I need to eat. So let's do... When eating, I don't really need the stat boosts from food for these fights but the uh, experience bonus is really what I'm going for and right th this particular dungeon run the Alexander the Cuff of the Fight Father we're literally inside the Alexander mech that appears at the end of uh, Heaven's War. I got that middle group we can skip the fight with. Now we're all getting pot shot by the, uh, the footmen up there. But we'll be out of their range once we start this fight.
Okay. <laughs> so you gotta go, we're gonna go. They're yelling at the cricket because they can't get to it because it's hiding too well. Cat's like, cricket, come out so we can eat you. And the cricket's like, yeah, no thanks. I'd really rather not. I'll make big booms. Yeah, there's, there's no real one set boss, and this one is just more of an endurance against waves of enemies. That's it. Give commendation here. Let's go with the other bard. Hope oh, the other bard ran away already. So. So head out of there. I mean, that, that, there, there's Alexander. There's a lot of fights in Alexander. Hey again, Foxes. Thanks again for the, the Prime sub earlier. Currently programming a thing, but it refuses to work. Um, the 56th line down, about 30 columns in, you've got a period out of place. Move that period, you'll be fine. <laughs> Obviously, I have no idea what I'm talking about, but... Queue up another dungeon run here. Alliance raids take a bit longer, but again, the adventurer in need for that one. Yeah, what the heck. We'll queue up and do this alliance raid and then call it a day. Well, it has 22. Oh, okay. <laughs> You know where the issue of not how to face, okay. <laughs> I 
Um, are you sure you're calling when you should? Are you sure there isn't a, a put where you should have called? Or something, you know, something along those lines. And uh, are, if you're referencing another database or another uh, subroutine, are you sure that that's intact? Breaks after trying to work again. Okay. So there's some variable that gets changed between run-throughs that is glitching things. Something about the, I'm going to guess, and again, without knowing what kind of program you're working with, what language you're working in, what it is you're ultimately doing. So yeah, it sounds like a, a variable the user inputs or a variable that shifts when it initially runs is uh, just oh, found it. <laughs> You're missing a two on a function name. <laughs> the file name has a three fourths. Cricket is rescued. I don't know if you're going on a rescue mission for the Cricket Arashi or if you're going on a full extermination mission. So good, good for the Cricket that it has been rescued. <clears throat> so how do, how does a file name has a three have a three quarter in it? Apparently, Windows file yes, window file names are 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 weird because if they uh, trying to convert to ASCII or or I know. Sometimes it, it, if, if you insert a file name longer than a certain length, uh, it'll recognize that file name on the user interface, but the stored file name will actually be abbreviated with some symbols at the end. So I think it might act actually you know, convert to ASCII for something like that. Doing Cirrus Tower with some people that haven't before. Cool. Well, we've got 19 minutes left on the food. Go ahead and just take another bite. For 49 minutes, that'll be more than long enough to make it through this run. Because if you go into the, the, the command prompt uh, in Windows and search through the directories, a lot of those file names are going to be shorter than what they are looking at Windows. So the file is... Yeah. I don't want to go too close. I don't want to trigger an aggro before the uh, tanks get here. I mean, I think that's been a thing with Windows for a long time. Uh, it allows you to basically name the file whatever you want, but then it converts it to its own naming convention when listing them in the command prompt and the directories. Still a holdover remnant from the DOS days there.
because it's it's well outside uh, the 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 average normal user's view. So they just leave it, which I you know I honestly I can't blame them for that. A lot of spaces that shouldn't be there. Yep. And when programming, you need the actual file name, not just the one that Windows calls it. Again, because you're looking through the command prompt directory, not the Windows directory, so... Staff of Elden Ring. Staff of Elden Rings! See, there's Elden Ring was around long before uh, they made a Souls game out of it. He's finally no pet, but yeah. Trying not to get frozen. Somebody, somebody with a fireball after him. Come out here. Come, come see me. The fireball person. I could. I could use just to be thawed, please. Three, two, one. I'm thawed anyway. Of mechanics of that fight I don't totally get. Some yeah conversion. The conversion Windows is doing but not telling you. B is actually down a person. It's a DPS, but they're still down somebody. Six characters goes to yeah. I, I probably wouldn't hurt to do that. It just you know a little free time experimentation anyway. So if an issue like this comes up again, you know the exact naming convention being used, and the exact character conversions. Breadcrumbs. I'm following a trail of breadcrumbs through this tech castle. Might be hex code. There you go. And zoop. A doop. Battle voice. Yeah. 
course, now the question is... Well, there, there, there's your three quarters, yep. Uh, does that matter where the R is in the name? Yeah, does it convert... Is the first converted letter any different than the sixth converted letter? Unicode being converted to ASCII. There you go. Why, why we didn't all just attack those things? Doesn't matter where. I know it's not as common anymore, but I know in some older programming languages, positioning of characters uh, meant a lot. So. Thanks. Two character, two hex digits per character, and R is four. Yeah. Ah. Scam tower. Voice, the Final Fantasy equivalent of Rebel Yell. Get them all? There it is. Since you're multiple of two characters. Well, that does fit into binary much easier, multiples of two. Some characters after it. Nope. No, Four Fortran was a programming language uh, just after punch cards. That dates things a little bit for you. And so, uh, in it, positions of characters in certain columns uh, registered certain things. I don't remember which column it was, but uh, let's just you know, just for the sake of argument, let's say uh, a character in a column six would tell the program that uh, that command line was a continuation of the line before it. Now it would ignore what character you put in there, uh, so it didn't matter if it was an asterisk, a two, a tilde, whatever. Get around the curtain call. Fortran, yep. <laughs> I I took a semester of Fortran back in the day. Don't remember any of it except for that positioning in the column. Because uh, that was a, that was that was a mistake I had made 
and why the, the program didn't compile was because uh, it's nasty and those get drawn. Oh, okay. Uh, I went again, knowing that a character in a certain column in Fortran told the program it was a uh, continuation of the previous line. I had uh, actually started a command in that column, not realizing it would see that there was a character there and then ignore that character. So all the commands I was doing that were continuations were incomplete commands because they were the, the first letter was missing out of them, basically. So I said, oh, if I just put an asterisk here instead of starting the command in this column, then I'm fine. So yeah, when it's combining ASCII and Unicode, oops, <laughs> B's tank died. Combining, combining two languages and characters don't exist in one language, they're gonna get ignored, dropped. Rebel yell! I'm gonna say that every time I pull out the battle voice now, Rebel yell. So foxes to, 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 to work with what you're currently working with, you pretty much have to be bilingual. Why did somebody, why did a tank do that? Wasted the limit break. Is C++ also doing a Java? check Uh, 
That's all the stuff I don't want. I've already got that. I've actually I've got all, already had that orchestrian. I need to see what it's going to take to have my alchemist. Uh, no idea where that <laughs> the bracket or that character comes from. Um, I need to have my alchemist. See what it's going to take to have my alchemist. Uh, Make those faded orchestrian rolls into full or orchestrian rolls. Spoken la oh, spoken languages are horrible. Well, many spoken languages are horrible. Some spoken languages aren't so bad. What you do have to remember about English is that, uh, unlike many other other spoken languages. Um, what syllable structure is used? Uh, unlike many of the other spoken languages, the English language didn't so much of so much evolve as it sat around in dark alleys waiting to mug uh, other languages for any loose syntax they might have in their pockets. Yeah, in English language is literally. Because the English language came, you know, from Britain and England originally, and it formed and developed from uh, an amalgamation of all the languages of the people that had conquered it. You know, the Romans and and you know the 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 French and the Germans over the centuries uses. <laughs> you've you've got a programming language that uses uh, Indian Pale Ale. Is this a drinking program you're making here, foxes? Let's do the main workshop for right now. So two more Luco Granite, three hemp, five logs. It's an international phonetic alphabet. Okay. I don't know. I, I like <laughs> I like the idea of a programming using beer better <laughs> and just as a silly idea you know let's see the rough black rock I'm gonna need let's see let's get this uh We get one of these uh, workshops upgrading. So I, if I had the materials, I could up, have all three upgrading at once. Uh, is that the J we have? It's probably like a uh, YAH. It's probably something along the, along the lines of a Y. Because it's, it's, there, there's a number of languages where the J is pronounced like a, a YA or YE. Close to Y, yeah. Make sure I have enough Luco Granite at least for this first one. Workshop two going up. Luco Granite, yep, I have enough now. Ooh, I have enough uh, iron ore for all three. But uh, five more island logs, three island hemp. And I wonder what does it take to be able to fly on my island? That's that's the next thing. Let's see, no, it's going to be a plant, not a log. Let's see, apple tree doesn't give me logs. That's a wild parsnip. That's a wild parsnip. I need the trees, not the plants. So many sounds. Potato, there's the tree. I mean, the two long trees and mahogany trees. That's just the non vowels. 
And I think largely that's, that's why, you know, we say, you know, the, the vowels in the English language are A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. Because so many of the languages that English is derived from have a Y as a vowel. Uh, there's nine vowels for this. A E I O U variations of those and a Y. Okay. And you get just slight slight pronunciations for each of those. So I just need to go get the three hemp. I should easily be able to grab down at the beach. And jump! And jump! Glide! Hello big beastie thingy. Jump! And glide. And hop on. So here's the hemp. Yeah, like the English alphabet. Which I think technically is the the Arabic alphabet, if I remember. No, it's Arabic, Arabic numerals. But the the English alphabet's 26 letters. How many in the Cyrillic alphabet? Just out of curiosity. In the Latin alphabet, that's what it is. Okay, so I've got what I need to upgrade one workshop to workshop three. Plus a few letters, minus a few others. <laughs> uh... F, Ach, and Win. Yeah. Let's see. Um, let me make sure. I'll see. Hemp. Uh, okay, I'm going to need four more. How much of the hemp do I need for the workshop? I need 10, so I need to grab three more so I have enough to keep my workshops manufacturing. I'm getting hemp from agave plants. Too bad we can't harvest some of the, the aspects of the agave plants for some tequila. Some fresh, wild grown agave. Ooh. That would make some nice tequila. Waiting for them to respawn. Hello, dear big bird. See, so, you know, there, there's the big bird like we would have been seeing earlier. Oh, that's right. I wanted to see mount guide how the saddle sits on a chocobo. Okay, I've got enough barding on mine. That's not going to do us much good. Um, that one. Yeah, that, that, that does come down under its chest. So, 
Doesn't cut very deep, so that isn't all feather. That would be body on the chocobo. Science! <laughs> yes! But yeah, look at the... the... Where'd it go? There's, there's one right up over there. Look at that, that bird ahead of me out to the left. Let me take a closer look. Tell you, if that isn't all feather fluff, imagine how much of a, you know, how much meat you can get off the breast of that bird. So, I mean, and it needs a beak that long to get around that much of a body to be able to feed. So. Okay, so do I have at least 14 hemp now? Yeah, I got 16. Okay. So let's uh, teleport back. Went to poke it looks so fluffy. So fluffy! Okay, uh, that's my granary. This is the workshop. Renovate it from 2 to 3. So that'll be ready in the next 12 hours or so. <laughs> Make sure. Don't check. Oh, I need two more island logs. I checked the hemp. I didn't check the logs. Just goes to always, always check your logs. That's a palm tree. Wrong kind of tree. Tree, no, I need the two along and mahogany. How many do I need? One more. These two along trees get you island logs and island twig, island branches, and uh, mahogany trees get you island logs and island sap. Actually, I have one of those birds in my pasture, too. We'll, we'll go say hi here in a second. But yep. Have enough resources for everything. So this is what they got making the rest of today. Haven't set anything up for them to make tomorrow yet. I'll worry about that tomorrow. But I, I like this. On the schedule, you literally have to have... Each of these is a it's a real world week. It's a seven seven day week. You have to have two days off in your workshop. Literally. So And these are these are mammoths. These are basically mechanicals that are making this stuff, but they still insist on two days off. But you can pick which two days they are, they don't have to be in a row. But uh they do still have to be two days. Uh, I'm right now. I'm just setting. If I have more than fifty of anything, the excess is going to get sold. So I have no alyssum. Up send uh, expeditions out for that. Actually, before I do that for the produce, let me. Some of these, some of these. Make some extra feed for my animals in the pasture. Then anything over 50. Sending out some fleece and some claws. Okay. And that's a day on the island. 
<laughs> well, Arashi, they're also getting paid nothing. <laughs> no, that's, that's interesting. I've got three workshops and two granaries that are using the mammoths to go out and the granaries, they're, they're going out and exploring and collecting resources. The workshops, they're taking resources and manufacturing them into things that I sell. Uh, I have no... Better compression? <laughs> Boxes? I have no idea. Uh, yeah, so the, the granaries and workshops, the... the, the, the Granaries, they'll work seven days a week. The workshops, they'll work five days a week. They're all getting paid nothing. But the mammoths that are tending to my uh, my crops and my creatures in the pasture, I'm having to pay for them. Uh, it's ten dollars for each creature getting taken care of, or not ten dollars, ten cowries. For each creature getting taken care of, and five cowries for each crop plot being taken care of. So that's why it's costing me 210 cowries a day to maintain my island, is because of these guys. And I can just tell them to start or stop anytime I want. The workshops and the granaries are getting paid nothing. So. And all the, the construction workers are getting paid nothing. So. But they, they all have the, uh, anytime they're not working, they, they all have access to, come up here and remember where, exactly where I put it. That's, yes, the, that's a granary and workshop. Treehouse. Let's look over this way. Isn't it? Yeah, here it is. Anytime they want, they have access to this nice little bathhouse. They can just come take a soak in the sauna. Anytime they want. So, actually, you know what? Let me... No, I don't want it here. Let's do it as the... Machinist. Oops, that's how I wanted. Glamour plate. Put on my island costume. I still have a book on my hip. Oh well. I'll jump in, jump in the hot tub in my shorts. That's my full battle gear. Been rewatching Torchwood. Yeah, Torchwood's good. I really wish it could have gone on longer. Uh, let me go ahead and get logged out of here. So I'm trying to think, where where do I want to log out at? Uh, Torchwood. Um, haven't started the final season yet, but yeah. Uh, oh, the, the, I don't know, the final, the, the Earth. I can't remember the other one. The, 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 the season slash miniseries towards the end of Torchwood that, uh, Peter Capaldi was in. Uh, That was a rough one. Um, but yeah, the whole Children of Earth, yes. Uh, who was the showrunner on that? I can't remember the, 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 like the main director. Was it Russell T. Davies? I think it was. Cause he, he was doing Doctor Who. And uh, he wanted to do another sci-fi series about an organization that protected Earth from alien invasions. And uh, the BBC said, yeah, okay, we like that idea. A Doctor Who spinoff would be great. 
Russell T. Davies is like, no, I don't want it to be a Doctor Who spinoff. I want this to be a standalone separate series. The BBC is like, no, we won't produce it. You can't make it with us unless it's a Doctor Who spinoff. So that's how it got the name Torchwood, which is an anagram of Doctor Who. Uh, that's how it was introduced in Doctor Who episodes. The Torchwood Institute was, was mentioned a couple of times. Uh, how it was initially formed and how it behaved later before uh, the real Captain Jack took over. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's why the series Torchwood exists as a spinoff. Is because BBC wouldn't let Russell T. Davies make the show at all unless it was a Doctor Who spinoff. Uh, that's not really what he wanted to do with it. So, uh, with all that being said, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, oh, it was written by Russell T. Davies. Yeah. Well, because the Sarah Jane Adventures. Um, see, there was an episode of Doctor Who when it was David Tennant and uh, uh, Rose Tyler um, where they had gone back and were visiting like one of the early queens of England. They had this whole adventure and the queen basically was not happy with... She was happy with the result but not happy with how the Doctor and the Rose behaved during the adventure. So she's like, okay... There, there's things that happen outside this world. We need to study them. And it was the Torchwood Estate where all this had happened. So that's where the name Torchwood Institute came from. Uh, so the... And then there was a later episode. Still Rose and Tennant. Uh, this time Rose's mom was along. And... They encountered the Torchwood Institute in full function. Uh, actually, the, 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 the people of the Institute knew who they were. That was, yes, that was the end of Rose's run. It was at the Torchwood Institute. Two th yeah, I think that's, I'm, I'm horrible with remembering names, but that sounds right. Tooth and Claw, yeah, that sounds right. Because that, that's basically where they theorized that the uh, the royal family was werewolves. Because the queen had been scratched. She said it was by debris, but it could have been by a werewolf. Yep, and that, that was the... Was that the second? No, Torchwood got mentioned by the gal who was the prime minister, but not actually seen. Torchwood was seen later. Yeah. So. All of those are season two. Yeah. Uh, and then Captain Jack comes back again in uh, at the end of Donna's run. And the whole Torchwood crew shows up in there. Uh, but yeah, Torchwood was a good series. I really I really like Torchwood. Not just for the adventures they had, but the the inner interconnections and the, the personality conflicts of the Torchwood team. You know, they, they, they didn't always like each other. Uh, and in the case of a couple of them, they really liked each other. So, I mean, it's, you know, it was a good series. I wish it would have run longer. Uh, cause there, there, there's aspects, other things I would have liked to have seen. Um, because there was an episode in there where uh, the um, the first episode, first pilot episode, if I remember right, they had that glove that could uh, restore life. Uh, Rope, you are kind of late. Yeah, we're getting ready to wrap up. I was just looking for somebody to raid. Thanks for coming by and hanging out anyway. Uh, this VOD will be up. I'm going to make a highlight of this. And the highlight will be up on 2 next Friday. Uh, so you can keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, the, there's a glove Torchwood had that would restore life. And uh, I would have liked to have seen more done with that. 
and the other glove. Although you did kind of see it at the end of Tennis Run in uh, in Doctor Who itself. You have yourself a good day too, Rope. Because uh, you can see the the Time Lord president had one of those one of those gloves that he was using. So. Uh, but I don't remember if he was because he was using the right handed glove. I don't know if the one that was bringing life was the left handed glove or not. I have to go back and watch that that episode. <coughs> but uh, I would have liked to have seen them do, done more with that. Um, well, because they they said the glove just kind of fell out of nowhere, fell out of the sky. The president was only wearing one glove at his end of end of uh, at the end of David Tennant's Doctor Who run. I think it was End of Time was the name of that episode. Um, so that the one that Torchwood had could have been the other glove. So, so it makes sense that I mean, given what it could do, it makes sense that it would be a Time Lord type artifact. So, I mean, you never know. Uh, but they... Um, I lost my train of thought completely. So, let me find somebody to raid. Wrap this up. Uh, I got stuff to do and get ready for work and all that. fun, All those fun things. I'm thinking we might go raid Fairy. Uh, she's doing some stream raiders today. Uh, which run in the dungeons in Final Fantasy. I don't like the, the distraction of the stream raiders. So, uh, actually, I think she's doing a giveaway at the moment because there's a, there's a couple of Feed Steve comments in her chat, but I just got an ad when I was loading up her stream, so. Um, so, yeah, we'll go say hi to Fairy. Once these ads clear and I can see what, make sure what's going on. Yeah. So yeah, let's go. Let's go say hi to Fairy Wings. Uh, da, 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 get the right thing here. So. And you have yourself a good day. Rope blade, and then enjoy your programming, and then uh, compiling and debugging uh, foxes. I'll get the get the raid started there. Get the raids calls dropped here. And uh, tomorrow, two o'clock central, um, raft with Thorin. Um, yeah, 2 o'clock Central Time tomorrow with Lord Thorin. Uh, Sunday, no stream because I'll be at a picnic. Uh, next stream, next live after that will be uh, on 2 Tuesday, 10 a.m. for uh, um, Heavens of Sorcery. Mm, yeah, this Tuesday should be fine. Yeah, Tuesday, Heavens of Sorcery over on 2 What, programming and debugging? <laughs> Well, if, you, if you're doing something else, you wish that you wish that you were programming and debugging. I don't want to know what you're doing right now, because that's got to be worse. <laughs> so, thanks again for hanging out. Uh, I will see you all around later. Uh, bye bye now. Hi, Rope Blade.